Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of John 15, 4, Abide in Me. The whole verse says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Neither can we what? Bear fruit. Remember what I told you. You can't bear fruit of yourself. You can't go out and do things good. It must be Christ doing the work through you. It must be Christ doing the work in you. That's the good fruit. We have to learn to try to establish what these fruits are. And the Bible tells us what these fruits are. And when we go and we find them, we realize, oh, that's completely different than what I was taught. Exactly. And that's the problem. Let's go up a few here. I am the true vine, John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. That pruning is a type of tribulation that happens throughout our life. That happens throughout sanctification. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. We have been cleaned. At the moment of salvation, done deal. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. It must be Christ bearing the fruit, otherwise we can't bear fruit. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified. By this my Father is glorified. Here's another way we can glorify the Father. If you abide in me, verse 7, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. We bear fruit to glorify God. And what is that fruit? Love, peace, patience, inexpressible joy. Looking to him, trusting him, believing him, his word, being in his word. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Notice he's giving ownership between two different commandments here. What are those? The commandments the Father gave were the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments are just as, as viable today as they ever were. This law stands regardless. The problem was we couldn't fulfill this law. In fact, knowing the law made us even sin even more. Jesus did something interesting in that he fulfilled the law and took the punishment, thereby paying the debt for sin, so that we didn't have to keep the law anymore. So now what are his commandments? John tells you what his commandments are. In uh, 1 John, faith and love. Elsewhere in the Bible it says, these three abide, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. We do these things and we fulfill the whole law. The, and what's funny is when you take faith and love and lay them over the Ten Commandments, you see which ones fall under them. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment. Jesus is telling us. A lot of people misunderstand what Jesus is referring to when he says, keep my commandments. They think it's the Ten. It's more than the Ten. It's the Ten, but more in the broader aspect of fulfilling them. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. If you love others, you won't do the things the commandments say don't do. Simple. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. We are friends with Christ because we do what he tells us to do. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. So he reiterates that point. Love is the key ingredient in all this. 
Communion with Christ is a certain cure for every ill. Whether it be the wormwood of woe or the coin surfeit of earthly delight, close fellowship with the Lord Jesus will take bitterness from the one and satiety from the other. Live near to Jesus, Christian, and it is a matter of secondary importance whether thou livest on a mountain of honor or in the valley of humiliation. Living near to Jesus, thou art covered with the wings of God, and underneath thee are the everlasting arms. Let nothing keep thee from that hallowed intercourse, which is the choice privilege of a soul wedded to the well-beloved. Be not content with an interview now and then, but seek always to remain in, or retain his company. For only in his presence hast thou either comfort or safety. Jesus should not be unto us a friend who calls upon us now and then, but one with whom we walk evermore. Thou hast a difficult road before thee. See, O traveler to heaven, that thou go not without thy guide. See, we don't know the way until he leads us. Thou hast to pass through the fiery furnace. Enter it, not unless, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, thou hast the Son of God to be thy companion. Thou hast to storm the Jericho of thine own corruptions. Attempt not the warfare until, like Joshua, thou hast seen the captain of the Lord's host and his sword drawn in his hand. Thou art to meet the Esau of thy many temptations. Meet him not until at Jabbok's brook, or Jabbok's brook. Thou hast laid hold upon the angel and prevailed. In every case, in every condition, thou wilt need Jesus. But most of all, when the iron gates of death shall open to thee, keep thou close to thy soul's husband. Lean thy head upon his bosom. Ask to be refreshed with the spiced wine of his pomegranate, and thou shalt be found of him at the last without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Seeing thou hast lived with him and lived in him here, thou shalt abide with him forever. Now, what would this look like? Turning to him in every situation, meditating upon him and his word and what he says, thinking about that when we look across the vast landscape of society and think, what was, what was the right thing to do? What did the Lord say I should do in this circumstance? You know, when we look at stuff that's going on with these charismatic preachers and the name it and claim it guys and all this stuff that's going on and, and how they're doing things and um, um, Hillsong's musics and, and the stuff that's going on. Like I said, if you haven't been watching Billy Crone's playlist on uh, demons, demonism and that kind of stuff, it, it's really worth watching because it's going to open your eyes to a great many things going on right in front of you that you didn't know. We start to see that we need to stay away from that stuff. We start to understand better. If this is what the world is doing, I need to avoid this, the Lord said to. The Lord said, test this. Test these things. Don't just take them for granted, but test them to see if they are godly. And if they are not, turn away. Rebuke, reprove. Mark and avoid. There are some out there you cannot save. There are some out there you cannot talk to. They won't hear it. And now, with the times that we're in, it has to be that way. Because there are some who are not going to turn now, but they will later. There are some that aren't going to turn at all. At all. Those we pray for. Unless they've gone to the point of no return. Then we leave them in the Lord's hands. He'll deal with them. What we should be most focused on is the Lord and his will for us. Lord, what do you want me to do? And it's simple. Share the gospel. Share the truth with anyone you can. Stand up for what's right. Show integrity. Thereby, bear fruit and glorify God. And this is something you do in your daily life. Every day. Living for him. In truth and integrity. Doing the right thing, even if it's going to cost you something. Even if it's going to lose you your job. Even if it's going to cost you friends or family relationships, doing the right thing, the thing that you know you're supposed to do according to the word of God. We glorify him in that. We bear good fruit in that. And giving thanks always for everything. Acknowledging the Father, agreeing with him.
It's real easy to just give into the world and do what the world says. But like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, when it came to the point that they were going to have to choose between God and man, they said, well, we, we choose God. Okay, well, it's time for you guys to die. Okay, send us home. We're ready. And every Christian at some point, every born-again believer at some point, is going to reach that crossroads where it's like, am I going full into this? To the point that whenever they say, well, if you don't do this, you're going to do this, where I'm willing to give my life for what I believe in and what I, what I know is true, we make that decision. In Christ, that makes you unstoppable. When you are so close to the Lord, when you stick by Him, to the point that, you know what, I'm going to stay with what I know is right, even if it means it's going to cost me my life. You're unstoppable. They can't touch you. Or they might take you, they might kill your body. But what a blessing that is, because then I get to go be with the Lord. Thanks, guys. I forgive all of y'all. See you a little later. Lord, I commend my spirit into your hands. Simple. And then the encouragement is, is we're friends with the Lord. We're friends with him. We're co-heirs with him. I don't think we fully understand what that means. Maybe because a lot of people haven't ex explained it. How important it is for us to understand. Not that we get to tell things what to do. We get to go out there and do all that stuff. Yet if we have the faith of a mustard seed, it will happen. But it's him that does it for us. But I can tell you this. Once you come to that place... Once you reach these mentalities we've been talking about the last few days, you start to realize, I don't need a lot. I don't, I don't want very much. I don't need to tell this mountain to move. I don't need to tell this tree to be uprooted, plant itself in the ocean. I don't need to do any of that. I just need to look to him and trust in him. Because he's the one who's going to make the way. He's the one who's going to clear the path. And so... Let us look to him. Let us trust in him. Let us rely on him. What else can we rely on? Who else is a friend? Who else sticks closer than a friend? Who else is there when everybody else is not? And instead of us going to him when that time comes, let us go to him now. When things are good and we have people around us. And establish our relationship. Look to him for all things. Ask him. Take counsel. Do it his way. Because if we haven't reached that point as an individual yet where most people don't want anything to do with us because of how we believe, it'll happen. But get that relationship with the Lord now. Establish that stuff now. We do that by reading his word, praying to him, talking to him. He's a, a living, breathing person. He's not just an idea. He's not just some ethereal entity somewhere. Jesus is real, just like we are. Has a body, just like we do. Albeit, he, it's glorified now. You can confide in him in all things. And he will comfort you. I know. I've been doing it for years. There are times when I was ready to give up. Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what to do. I would lay this in your hands because I can't positively affect it. And that was when I was fighting against him, trying to do it my way. And I failed. I finally come to the place where I do it his way. Lord, what do you, what do you want me to do? That's That I will do. Then it works out better. I'm happier. More focused. More at peace. It's established a greater sense of loving because now his attributes are becoming mine. And I love it. I love it because it's so much better, so much less complicated. Everybody wants to complicate everything. It's not complicated. It's simple. We spend so much time overcomplicating this, and it was never meant to be that. Let us keep it simple, stupid. K-I-S-S. -S, keep it simple, stupid. And just believe him for what he says. Take him at his word. Walk in faith and in truth in Jesus Christ. Lord, we... We call out to you today. Help us to understand this. Establish this relationship that we do what you say. You say we are your friends. Lord, show us that we're your friends. 
Make us to believe your word. Make us to walk in truth and in integrity. To bear fruit in you. To glorify God. To obey you. To do what you say. Because you know better than any of us what the right thing is to do. That we may glorify you too. We thank you, Lord, that you have shown us such mercy and such grace. That you died for us to pay the debt we owed so that we would have salvation. That you are preparing a place for us in heaven where we, we may live forever. That we will have an eternity to commune with you, to enjoy your company, to listen to you and learn from you. And whatever else the Father has laid up for us. How can we how can we not look to you? Especially now when in this world there's no hope. I mean, look at what's going on. There's no hope. You are our only hope. Especially now. But you are also the world's only hope. Some of us are going to come in on one one way. Some of us are going to come in on a whole different level. Not a very fun one. But Lord, you know those that are yours. And you will get those that are yours when the time is right. When the appointed time comes, all who are yours will be brought home. All who are yours will be brought into the sheepfold. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can be called your friend. And that you have given us the right to be called the sons of God. That when we see you, we will see you as you are and we will be like you. But Lord, I ask that you make us to be more like you now. To take on more of your attributes as we live this life and move about this world and to emulate those attributes, your attributes, to the world around us. Just maybe somebody, it'll catch somebody's attention and they'll realize, wait a minute, I need to turn to the Lord. This is, this is what the Lord does so that they will believe too. As we pray for them that are lost, we pray for all those friendly f uh, family, friends, strangers that are lost, that you open their eyes to see the truth, that their time will come quickly. We pray that the church's removal will come quickly because we are all tired of this world and this alien environment we live in. We long to see you. But thank you, Lord. Thank you that we have the life that we have. Thank you that you show us the things you show us and that we are found worthy to suffer in your name, to suffer your sufferings, be they physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. And that when that happens, we know our Father sticks closer to us because he's very close to the contrite heart. Make us to be more like you, Lord, in this day and age, that people may see it. Glorify God. That we may bring honor to your name and glory to the Father's name. And we look forward to seeing you, hopefully sooner than later. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. Believing in Jesus Christ is more than just going through a series of steps. Believing is having an actual connection and a relationship to him. Seeing him as my, my friend. Seeing him as my confidant. The teacher. Healer. Leader. Shepherd. You name it. We are so much more than what we used to be because we've been changed. But right now it's masked in sinful flesh. But pretty soon that's going to go away and it's going to be changed into something much more grand. And we will be like him. I look forward to that day when there's no more temptation, no more sin, no more pain, no more hunger, no more none of that stuff. Just him and us. Forever. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.